Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with apple cider braised pork roast. And actually, that's kind of false advertising because I'm not using apple cider. I'm using apple juice, but both work in this recipe. So either one. We're also going to do a beautiful, beautiful reduction sauce. No ruse, no thickeners, just natural goodness. So here we go. I have a boneless pork shoulder roast. This one's about four and a half pounds, which is, I think, a perfect size for this recipe. We're gonna season that pretty generously on both sides with salt and pepper. I'm gonna take a large skillet on high heat with a little bit of vegetable oil, and we're gonna sear that on all sides. You wanna get a pretty decent brown crust on there. Once you've browned your piece of pork thoroughly, I'm gonna transfer that into our slow cooker. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium and I'm going to add some sliced shallots and diced celery. Now you can certainly use onion here, but I had some shallots, so I thought for a change of pace, I would go with the shallots. I'm simply going to cook those in whatever fats left in the pan just for a couple minutes. We're just giving them a head start. This is all going to braise for a long time. So after two or three minutes, I'm going to pour in apple cider vinegar and deglaze the pan. We want to make sure we get all those brown bits off the bottom. That's all, you know, free flavor. And we're going to cook that until the apple cider vinegar is just about gone. See that? It's almost evaporated. At that point, you want to scrape the entire contents of the pan into the slow cooker. All right, I'm also going to toss in four or five cloves of peeled garlic. You don't need to slice it. You don't need to chop it. You can just throw them in whole, just like that. I'm going to throw in a bay leaf. And then finally, we're going to finish this with a couple cups of apple cider or, in my case, apple juice. They both work really well. So we're going to pop on the lid. I'm going to set my slow cooker to low, and we're going to let that braise for about six hours approximately until basically fork tender. Now, every couple hours, I want you to turn it over. This is not a braised dish that has a lot of liquid. So that liquid's only coming up about a third of the way up the pork roast. So every couple hours, I want you to turn it. And it's cooking nice and gently, nice and slowly. All right, not much can go wrong here. But you do want to turn it every couple hours. Now, we're not making pulled pork. I don't want this to fall apart. I want to be able to slice this like a pork roast. So I do want it to go until it's tender, but I don't necessarily want it falling apart. So you're going to have to be the judge. You're going to have to be the boss of your pork roast. See right there, mine was almost ready. It was just about where I wanted it, but I thought to myself, you know what, give it another half hour and it'll be perfect. Now, if you're new to this cooking thing and you're a little nervous, we don't blame you. Relax though. Air on the side of a little too long versus not long enough. All right, once I've determined the pork is done to my liking, I'm gonna remove that to a plate, cover it with foil to keep it warm because our sauce is gonna take about 10, 15 minutes to put together, which is fine. That big hunk of meat is gonna stay plenty warm. All right, while the pork rests, we're going to transfer the cooking liquids, the braising liquid, into a saucepan. I'm going to put that on high heat, bring it up to a boil, and simply reduce it down to about approximately 25% of its volume. When it starts getting down low, you want to keep an eye on it. When mine reduced down to that far, I'm going to turn off the heat and finish the sauce. And you know what? I just realized I haven't made any jokes during this video. And you know why? because I do not find apple juice humorous, not at all. I'm gonna add some black pepper, some cayenne, a pinch of salt. All right, final touches, I'm gonna whisk in a spoon of Dijon mustard, and you don't have to use Dijon here, you can use the yellow mustard if you want, but don't. And then we're gonna finish with a few chunks of cold butter, which are basically gonna thicken up the sauce a little bit, give it a beautiful, beautiful texture, a lovely shine. And once the butter goes in, make sure you keep whisking, keep whisking, keep whisking until the butter disappears and you're done. And yes, I have to admit something right now. When you weren't looking, I strained this because I wanted it to look pretty in the pictures. At home, you don't have to strain it. All right, I'm gonna finish with a little fresher, I'm using Italian parsley. A little bit of fresh sage would be very lovely. All right, I'm gonna give it a taste. Do any final seasoning adjustments? Maybe a little more salt, maybe a little more pepper. Depends. You decide. And then, I think you know what to do next. Slice your pork, put it on a hot plate, spoon over some of that sauce. Remember, this is a highly reduced, very flavorful sauce. You don't need a lot, okay? So just a few tablespoons is all you're going to need. Even without the sauce, this pork is delicious because it's slowly braised in that flavorful liquid. But when you put this sauce on, it just goes up to a whole nother level. And if you did everything properly, you do not need a knife. This will literally be fork tender. 
and that was really really delicious and here you go i know you guys love when i do the second bite and this really did deserve it just so luscious and the epitome of homey cold weather cooking so i really hope you give that a try all the ingredients are on foodwishes.com of course and as always enjoy enjoy